Well, hey, crafty friends, and happy Tuesday, July 5th to you if you're watching this live. Happy whatever day it might be if you're watching on replay. I'm excited about this video uh, because I'm going to show you how you can use some things that you might have on hand. And I want to give you some ideas for next time you go to the beach. Okay, we are going to be using some of these broken... Like they were pretty nasty when I picked them up. Bits of oyster shells that I picked up in Savannah. Oops, I think I wrote Charleston on my um, text alert. Oops. Um, Savannah in 2012. And then I believe I picked up all of this in Hilton Head. Don't know what year. But whenever we go on trips, I had no idea at the time what I would do with either one of these. It just kind of been sitting in my basement waiting for me to have a brilliant idea. This is also a bag of something that I picked up. I wish I would have remembered to label it. We're not gonna use this today. But anyways, I just wanted to plant that seed in your mind to find things when you're on family trips um, that you can create something with. Okay, so we're gonna be using those shells. Then we're gonna be using one of these Dollar Tree wood panels. This one is 12 by 12. This is, I think, 9 by 14. We're going to use this larger one. But you guys, these are great, and they're $3 at a Dollar Tree Plus. And we're going to use some wooden crosses, also from Dollar Tree, a dollar twenty-five. We're going to use this stencil, which is called Victorian Pattern, and some gold chalk paste. Um, I did paint, do some painting before I came live, and I'll tell you about that. But we're using this Waverly paint in steel and agave. I'm also using a little bit of the Waverly clear wax. What else? Hot glue. Oh, and my favorite. My serious all-time favorite in the whole world. This is that set of ink and chalk paste markers that you can get at magnoliadiy.com. But I can get you direct links and all the information at the end. So as you're hopping on, tell me hi, let me know where you're watching from, feel free to sprinkle, all that normal stuff. Um, okay, so we're gonna start with this. This is gonna be our frame. We're creating a beautiful piece of shell art in the shape of a cross. And this was that nine by 14 wood panel that was $3 from Dollar Tree. So before I came live today, because it's no fun to watch paint dry. I mixed a little bit of this agave blue with this steel gray. These, this paint I get at Walmart. You can use whatever you have, whatever color you love. I was looking for a gray blue color. Um, so I painted two coats of that on here. I did not paint the back, but you certainly could. And then I used a little bit of very fine sandpaper to sand this part. These boards are not very smooth. And then I used a little bit of clear wax to seal the pores, hopefully. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stencil a background so it can dry for a few minutes while we're doing the other steps, okay? This, um, if you've watched DIY Dreaming for any amount of time, you probably recognize that this is my favorite stencil of all time. It's called Victorian Pattern. It's my new one. My old one, let me show you, just for fun. It still works, it looks terrible. This is my old one. It's like uh, two and a half, three years old, and I've used it a bazillion times, probably 60 or 70 times. And it looks terrible. It doesn't have a lot of stick left to it, but it still works. So this is my newer one that I've used maybe five or ten times. And we're going to use that. Um, so we're going to stencil the inside of this piece first. And I'm not going to fuzz it because, like I said, I have used this a few times. And I'm not going to worry too much about the direction that the pattern's going because this is one of those awesome, really no directional stencils that don't have a specific up or down. And I'm just pressing it in to my board. 
Okay, and then I'll take a little stir. This is called Glittering Gold and it's chalk paste. So it's not permanent. Um, this is a great color, love it. And I'm just gonna put some big blobs on here. This just kinda gives this project some dimension. Well, I see lots of people hopping on. I hope everybody had a wonderful 4th of July. We did. Um, I live in the suburbs of Atlanta and we had a beautiful afternoon that was hot. And then about the time that fireworks would be starting, we got a bunch of storms, like big storms where there was thunder and lightning. And um, my husband and I spent the day with our kid, our oldest son and his wife. And um, we weren't going to see fireworks live. We're kind of past that age and stage. We used to do that every year with our kids when they were little. But I was feeling bad for all the families that were probably out there for hours saving their spot to watch the fireworks only to have the whole thing be canceled. Anyways, that's my story. So what did you do for 4th of July? All right, so I'm, you can kind of see I'm just spreading my gold, glittery gold chalk paste all over. If you would prefer this project in cream, you could do that. You could do it with um, paint your board, your panel, my favorite color, plaster, Waverly uh, paint. You could do that and then you could do this part in black or dark gray or um, these are just the colors that I chose, but they're not super specific to this project. So you could do whatever sounds good to you and use whatever supplies you might have on hand. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick up the big blobs. And I know there's gonna be areas that I missed because it's hard to get into the corners, but I'm not gonna sweat that too much. Here. This is what it looks like. I wouldn't use a brand new stencil on this project because it does get folded over on itself a little bit in the corners. Ooh, this is pretty. Um, but mine, like I said, I've used it probably five or ten times. Okay, I'm taking it over to my little tub of water and I'm just gonna lay it in my tub of water until I can get out to my kitchen sink to clean it. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. I thought this would be a pretty combination. On my camera here, on my video, this looks sort of almost teal, but it was a mixture, well, no wonder, it was a mixture of this agave with some gray in it, and it's really pretty with the gold. And, the gold chalk paste looks great with the ink. We're using the ink marker, which is fine, in gold from this set. It's great. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside so it can dry. And let's move on to our cross. Okay, did the same thing. I painted my cross with two coats, and I have two different styles. Um, before I came live, and what I'm gonna do now is I just wanna outline the edges of it um, with my gold ink pen. And I'm just priming it. I use this so much, I wouldn't be terribly surprised if I was getting down towards the end of it, but it's last, lasted a ton for a ton of projects. There we go. I'll hold this up in just a second. Okay, can you see how I'm just outlining the edge?
And if it feels like it's not dark enough, you can come back when it's starting to dry and do another, you know, go over it a second time. But on this color, it looks great. So let me just finish this. I use these markers on... I'm so sorry about that. That is my son, Christian, calling us. Um, so I'll call him back when I'm finished. So you can see how quickly this comes together. I'll hold it up and show you in just a second. For me, it's easier to do it if I'm pulling my marker towards myself. So that's why I keep flipping my piece around. Can you see that? It's gonna show up a lot better with the gold line on it and with the gold background that we did. Okay, so the one I'm actually gonna use is this one. And I already did this outline thing. So, whoops, that's the back of it. <laughs> so it would be dry. Okay, so we're gonna use this one. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about shells. Okay, this bag of shells, my husband was like, why are you picking these up? Um, it's a whole, I didn't, wasn't really even sure what these were. They're just different kinds of, I guess, different kinds of oyster shells that have been washed up on the beach over time and sat out in the sun some of them are a little broken. Um, and uh, I can't remember even where I picked these up, but I had it labeled. This bag, I think I picked up more recently because I do feel like I remember this. This was from Hilton Head, South Carolina. And um, we were at one of those points with all the restaurants. And off to the side of the little docks and stuff was a beach that had a ton of messy little bits and pieces. And so I always have a, a plastic bag with me when we're at the beach. So I went and grabbed a bunch and then I cleaned them up when I got home and they just look like this. They're not all great, but I pulled out the ones that are sort of round. This is a baby oyster. I pulled out some that are sort of roundish. And we're going to create like a flower in the center of our cross. And then we're going to put it um, for itty bitty ones. And they don't even need to be a whole piece of oyster. They just need to be roundish. We're gonna make a flower in the center of our cross. Anyways, I'll come back to this if I need to. Okay, but we're not just making a plain flower for the center. We are gonna make one that is has the gilded edges too. So same pin. I've already been working on a few of these pieces. And I'm just very quickly going to color around the edges. I'm not even worrying if it's neat. I've got my glue gun heating. I'm using, gonna be using my low temperature Sherbonder mini glue gun today. You could do this whole project in silver if you wanted, um, or you don't have to do the gold or silver, but I, I think it adds a really nice touch. And when I go to my Pinterest account lately, Pinterest must think that I'm completely oyster 
obsessed because that's what it's showing me. Oysters every day. So I'm like, okay, this didn't come, this idea didn't come from a specific Pinterest thing. It just reminded me to go in the basement and look and see if I still had those bits and pieces of broken oyster shells that I picked up years ago. And I did, yay. So I'm just gonna color these. I did go ahead and color some of them so you wouldn't have to be waiting around for me to do this. I love these little baby ones. Something in the water there must have eaten these little teeny ones that never had a chance to really develop, but they have that, that telltale purple mark on them, even back when they're this little. So if you have ever collected this kind of shell, tell me in the comments, and I'd love to know what you did with them. I'm not gonna color all of these, but let's just get a few going. And we'll start building our flower in the center of our cross. So I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday and that you didn't have really bad storms where you are like we did. I might dig through Pinterest later um, and see if I can pull up some of the other fun ideas that I've seen lately. Um, and I'll, if I can find some, I'll share pictures. Some of these are so sweet. I'm looking really for the just the teeniest ones because this is going to be a, a flower that sort of builds in scale. And this dries super quick. I'm not going to do anything at this point to seal it. It's going to be a piece of art. It's not going to get handled a lot. Um, if you thought it was going to get handled a lot, you could use a clear spray sealer, a spray sealer over the top if you wanted. My shells are all clean. I cleaned them years ago. Um, they're just very dusty. So my hands are dusty. Okay, let's say that that's good to start. All right. And let me get my feet on and some glue. How this is looking. I may come back and do edging on the outside of this frame. I'm not sure. So we'll see how it looks and if, if it needs that or not. Okay, I'm using my Sure Bonder Cool Shot Low Temperature Hot Glue Gun and we're going to start to kind of build a flower right here using my bigger pieces of oyster shells. Where do I want that one to go? Down. And then I'll glue these on and then we'll do another layer. Okay, 
that's essentially going to be the first layer. Cielo says she has tons of soy seashells that she doesn't know what to do with. She got them at Sanibel Island many years ago. She has tons. Um, I have multiple bags of seashells in the basement too. You know, when I'm at the beach, I don't know, what do you like to do? I can't just sit for hours. I could, but that's just... So I love shell hunting when I'm at the beach. I think that is really fun to do. And just recently, like, I don't know, in the last year or so, um, we were at the beach and I talked to this sweet little girl who was hunting for bits of um, sea glass. And she kind of showed me how to look for that. And I did actually find a couple pieces of decent sea glass. But I just, I'm a, I'm a hunter-gatherer kind of person. And I love looking for treasures. This piece is not gonna work. Let's do these two. I'll hold this up in just a second and show you. There are glue strings and glue strings and glue strings and glue strings here. Okay, that's cute, but it's going to be much better because now we're going to add another layer. may have to color some more. Okay, I think that's gonna work. Let me do this one first. Do you guys like this idea? feel a little bit lost in terms of crafting after a big holiday because I've been doing so many 4th of July projects that I'm like, well, what do we do now? Um, to me, honestly, I'm tempted <laughs> to go straight into fall and Christmas, but it's too early for that. So I'm like, well, let's do some kind of a faith theme but with a little bit of beach and okay let me get this off my fingers and um so then I was thinking about these oyster shells that I have okay I think we need some more bits and they need to be teeny 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 so let me look a little more Oh, I love that idea, but I don't have any of these. You might look on Amazon and see if they have little crushed or little pieces of oysters. Here's one. Excuse me. I have to some. Um, because I just found that on Amazon. You can find just about anything you could ever want to find an order. And if you have Prime, I love Prime because there's free shipping, which is awesome, on most things. Okay, well, I guess I'll work with what I have. Oops, I need to color this. Where's my pen? Here it is. You could do this idea with another kind of shell as well. It doesn't have to be oyster shells. But that's my 
what I had and what I felt like using today. Stay with me because we're going to take it all the way to the end and put the whole thing together. And I want to know what you think, if you like it and if you think that this is something that you might try to recreate in your own style using your colors, the things, the objects and things that you have available to you. None of these are great. use what I have here and then I may continue building after. So I have these little pieces that are decent. And these ones are too big probably. Although that one could work. I put it right there. As I'm building this flower, ouch, I'm trying to push my seashells a little bit so that they're tipping out. If that makes any sense. So it looks more like a flower blossom. My husband and I were in Hilton Head. It can be perfectly imperfect. You're right. My husband and I were in Hilton Head um, not too long ago for just a little getaway. And I took some pictures at a shop there that had a lot of beautiful oyster shell things. And um, I suppose that kind of inspired me for this project too. Okay, well anyways, that is where I am right now. And without digging and digging and digging for more shells that are the exact right size, I'm gonna go with this. And I may add some more to it. I don't want it to be so heavy that this piece will fall off of my board. But, okay, this is the board. And this was gonna go right here. What do you guys think? I may need to draw a thicker line of gold around it. I'm not sure. You know, when you get these ideas in your mind, you don't always know exactly where you're going to be headed with it. But I'm gonna glue this puppy down. So we're just gonna say good. And if you hopped on late, um, this board, this panel, is from Dollar Tree. It's $3. This cross is one of the wood crosses from Dollar Tree. It was $1.25. I used my, um, some paint I have that is Waverly brand. This background here is a combination of agave and steel. Waverly acrylic chalk paint and I stenciled the background of my board using the um, Victorian pattern stencil and some of this gold chalk paste and here's where I am so what I want I'll get good pictures but what I want to know from you guys what else should I do to it? Because honestly, looking at it right now, I feel like it's not finished. So tell me in the comments, should I do some outlining around the edge of this? I may add some more little bits of oyster shells in there. Should I draw, I'm not a very good drawer, but or should I make the this edging on this cross thicker? Torch up tips of shell. Oh, touch up tips of shells. Yeah, I definitely will. 
You don't think it, Dixie, hey Dixie, she says she doesn't think it needs more gold around the edges. Yes, okay, one of the followers here, and I apologize, I didn't get your name. These comments go by so fast. Said, would it be possible to use magnets on the background of this and on the background of the back of my cross so that it could be changeable? That is a fabulous idea. And yes, you absolutely could do that. Debbie says that she likes the simplicity of it. I don't know, it looks unfinished. I don't know. But this is where I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna um, maybe a bead hanger with beads painted. That's a good idea. Uh, let me try putting it in an easel just so that you guys can see. <laughs> so I made it from my shells that I picked up um, what do you guys think what do I need to do to it don't be offended but you think it's too much teal green on the cross it needs to stick out I'm not offended I'm asking for ideas the cross is not standing out enough it blends in well how could I make the cross stand out a little bit better because it's glued on here now Maybe a small raffia bow, that's a good idea. Pearls on the seashells, that's a good idea too. Less is more is what Denise says. You know, that's the thing that I struggle with, honestly, the most with my crafts. Well, I always want everyone to love it and obviously not everyone loves everything that you do. Some things are just not everyone's style. But the other thing is I never know when to stop until I've gone too far. And then I'm like, dang, why did I do that last thing? A darker cross. Well, I could paint my cross a little bit darker. I will for sure remove all of these blue strings. I don't know. Anyways, this is where we are. This was my project. If you would like links that tell you what these colors are, um where everything came from that has this these are my favorite pins tell me in the comments if you have these because a lot of people do i use them all the time or you want chalk paste or you want the stencil that does this beautiful design it's called victorian pattern just say link and i'll get you a link um i did use that pattern i was experimenting earlier this is just one of those little dollar tree canvases to see if I was gonna like it. So this is my test. And this is those same colors of paint with the teal, with the, um, the gold hot paste. Outline the frame in gold. I do think I am gonna do that, Julie. Maybe weather the cross. I don't think I can get it off my board now without ruining my board. I don't know. A lace bow, that would be pretty. Well, I'll tell you guys what. I am gonna do my favorite thing right now, which is I'm gonna sit down on my comfy chair. I'll probably get um, a sparkling water and I'm gonna read your suggestions. <laughs> Anne says she ruined a project this weekend by not stopping when she should have. That's my problem. Anyways, I'm gonna sit down and read what you guys have to say. If you want links, say link and I'll get you the information. Dry brush it a little darker. And I'm gonna read all of your suggestions. And I find that if I think on things, I'll leave it be for at least a few hours. <laughs> Maybe some doodads on it. That's my favorite word. Then I'll come back with a fresh eye and having seen what um, you guys have said, and I will see what I can, I can finish it up. Anyways, all right, well, thanks so much for joining me, and I hope I'll see you tomorrow. I have about 10 projects that are in process here in this craft room, and I don't know which one I'll be bringing to you tomorrow, but it'll be something that'll be quick and easy. Um, it'll be 
affordable. It'll be, I mean, my, these shells were free. This cross was $1.25. This frame was $3. My stencil was around $25 to purchase a stencil, but like I showed you my Credi one that I've had for over two years, and you can use it like, hun well, not hundreds and hundreds, but if you take care of them, you can use them for a very, very long time. So this whole project is probably well under $5. So what I'll be coming to you tomorrow with will be quick, affordable, sometimes a little different, like making this flower out of um, little bits and pieces of oyster shells. It will be, um, it'll be either faith, family, or flower focused. And it'll be different because I like to mix things up every day. I never want two days to look the same here at DIY Dreaming. So if you haven't already liked and followed this page up here where those three dots are and turned on your notifications, please do that. Uh, that improves your odds of seeing what I have going on. Oh, somebody's saying go around the cross with twine. I'm gonna sit, I can't wait to sit down and read all you guys' suggestions. But otherwise, do a thumb or a heart or tell me your suggestion in the comments and that improves the chance that Facebook will decide to serve you what I have coming up. If they don't serve it to you, just come back on your own. Just type in DIY Dreaming in your search bar at Facebook or go to YouTube and look for me there. And um, you can watch any video you would like going back four years. Alrighty, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.